Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Citic Alex. And today I want to talk about something that is pretty important for your account, but often goes under discussed and it is agent level. And I get a question or two about this every week or two. So I know it's pretty important and actually will range in importance, whether you're a new player, intermediate player or veteran, and also where you're going to allot your agent points will also differ whether you're a new player, intermediate player, returning player or veteran. So I think it's a good thing to discuss now again. And it also is going to tie into some discussion that I want to have with you guys about my daily routine and how that's changed a little bit, uh, especially in the last about week or two, I sort of had an epiphany. So I want to talk about that later. But first things first, we're going to talk about agent level. So what is agent level? It's actually a combination of your hero badge and your agent badge, your hero badge, which is over here. Well, your hero badge, which is over here, mine's level 175. It is a totality. It's a calculation of all of the rank ups you've done on characters. That's why when I click settings for agent for a hero badge, it's going to take me to my account. So every time you six star a character, every time you tier two a character, tier three a character, transcend a character, you're going to get every, anytime you get an achievement for a character, you're going to get XP towards your hero badge. So my hero badge is very, very high 175 because I have, you know, every tier three and I have almost every transcended character and I have every other character available tier two. Your agent badge is just from your agent levels and you can get agent levels. If you go over to the settings there, you can get agent levels by pumping materials, either the materials that drop in world event, like the agent kits or literally your materials like ISO mythic comic cards, etc. You can pump that into the agent badge to level it up. And of course, as you get more as you get higher and higher level it's going to require more and more so if you're at level one and you use one mythic card it might honestly take you immediately to level two as you can see here i need to take how many one two three four five six of them to give me about a quarter or a third of a level so it's going to take me like you know 20 of these mythic cards to get to level 50 or 51 for the agent level you're also going to need the tokens and again this is all tied into world event. So if you're not playing world event, then you don't have any agent badge. Your agent badge might be level one, to be honest. And to be honest, if your agent badge is level one, you might want to, if you're done crafting, it's not a bad idea. I know done crafting, who's done crafting. But anyways, just, just a thought I had, if you're done or nearing done crafting, it's not a bad idea to maybe take 10 or 20 mythic cards and pump them into your agent badge to get a couple of levels quickly especially if you're very if you're if you're at a very low level for your agent badge if you're at a high level like 20 30 40 50 it's not worth it as you can see you can tell right one of them adds so little but if you're at a very low level it actually does add a lot and it's a lot easier to get mythic comic cards now but anyways the point i'm trying to make is you're doing all that like why are you in increasing your hero badge why are you increasing your agent badge the hero badge is kind of like a passive increase right you want to rank up characters but the agent badge is more deliberate you have to play world event kind of a snooze fest game mode you're doing it for the bonus when you click the bonus it's going to bring up this page there and that page is basically what i want to talk about today one of two things i want to talk about so people ask again i get this question about once a week once every two weeks how should i invest my agent points alex what did you invest your agent points into and you can't see this when you look up my account unfortunately but this is what i have it on now however this was not what i always had it on and i sort of give this advice to new players especially the most important thing for new players, in my opinion, is actually increases character XP acquisition because level five XP chips are very, very hard to get. And at the beginning of the game, you're given lots of characters, you're given lots of six stars and they're all level one and you need to get them to level 60 ASAP. You also then need to get more characters to level 40 and 50 or 40 and 50, 40 for co-op and 50 for the crystals, the 40 crystals. So there's, there's just so much XP farming. And so you can pump lots of points into this early on and it can actually accelerate the xp to then let you get more tier twos to give you more hero badge to give you more of these points and every time you level up your agent level you're going to get a new point so i'm agent level 224 so as you can see i have 223 points i have 100 points into item acquisition and i have 123 points into max hp so putting as a very new player putting points into uh, character xp will actually help you farm agent level faster so you can put more points into XP, so then you can put more points into other things. Don't worry about putting points into one of these bonuses and then you know, regretting it later. The reset is only half a million gold. It's not cheap, but it's not that expensive and it's always gonna cost that much. It's not gonna change and cost crystals later. So it's really good. 
after you've graduated as a new player or if you're a returning player and you don't need the XP chips, you don't need the character XP, then the next best choices, in my opinion, are increase item acquisition chance and increase gold acquisition. Now, there's one thing I'm doing with my finger that you're probably wondering, what the heck is he doing? I'm pressing down on the little badge icon, the little bronze badge icon. When you press that, it tells you which content the bonus applies to. This is very important. I still see this to this day. People saying, oh, I wasn't getting any CCF from World Boss, and then I changed my agent level bonuses, and I put it all in uh, increased item acquisition chance, and now I'm getting tons of CCF. That's if that's complete fabrication. Either the person is intentionally lying or they're just confused. It doesn't really matter. But you can see there it says missions, dimension mission, epic quest, dispatch. And dispatch is not capitalized. It should be. But anyways, this gives you the 30% higher chance to get an item from these missions. And that's really good for intermediate and veteran players. So I think this is actually the best thing to invest in long term, especially now that we have dispatch. And now that you can farm dispatch to get premium items. So if you've been farming dispatch overnight, especially with energy to try to get uh, premium CT, like CTPs and Oda's Blessings on 7-1 or higher, make sure your item acquisition chance is maxed out. 30%, 100 points. The next best thing, in my opinion, would then be gold acquisition. However, the gold acquisition is a little bit contentious, okay? I don't have to, I don't have the gold acquisition. I actually removed it like a year ago because they well actually I removed it more than a year ago. I think I removed it like two years ago. They removed daily missions. And when they remove daily missions, the missions that it applies to, again, you can see there the increased gold acquisition only applies to dimension missions and epic quests. We did the calculations on stream. Even if you do all of the epic quest missions every single day, like all of the you have all of the deluxe packs and all of those quests, okay? and you do 35 dimension missions on level 15 every single day, you're only getting yourself about 3 million gold a month. Yes, that's right. I said 3 million gold per month. <laughs> it's not very much. It's, it's, very, it's a very, very small amount of gold because it caps out at 20%, and it's 20% of whatever you're getting in that one mission. So, for example, a Dimension Mission gives you about 5.5 thousand gold. 20% of 5,000 is nothing, right? It's, it's peanuts. 20% uh, of 35,000, which is the highest you can get from any of the Epic Quest missions, is not peanuts, but it's still pretty, it's like 6,000 gold, right? It's really just not worth it. However, it's only 100 points. But you can put those 100 points into anything else that you want. So what I ended up actually doing is putting it into max HP. The reason why I put it into max HP is because it gives you a better return than attack. Attack is 0.01% and all defense is 0.03. Defense is better than HP. HP is 0.02, but HP is much more valuable than defense, right? I'd much rather have 2% max HP than 3% all defense. 2% max HP can be a lot, especially for characters like Hulk and Victorious. So... I honestly think that it basically goes, you know, increase character XP if you're a new player or possibly a returning player who doesn't have any XP chips, but then you should quickly graduate out of that and then pump all of your points into item acquisition chance and then keep them there forever because they're really, really good. And then once and then the, the rest of your points, the excess points past 100, you can honestly put them into gold acquisition or max HP. It's really up to you. You could put them into all attack as well. I could switch that and get a 1.3% or 1.23% uh all attack which is okay i guess but i i personally like the hp uh but yeah that's my opinion on how you should spend your um, agent bonus points now the reason why i'm basically pushing you away and telling you not to do the increased gold acquisition is because one most missions give you very very little amount of gold per per mission right which is where that percentage is being added if the increase uh, gold acquisition was like a percentage in co-op when co-op pops gold, it gives you 400,000 gold. If I'm getting 20% of 400,000, yeah, that's worth it. That's really worth it, baby. So then I would say do it, but that's not the case. It's only for Dimension Missions and Epic Quest. So the reason, the other thing I want to tell you that's sort of related to that and why you should move away from gold acquisition there is because you're going to be farming. You're going to want to farm Dispatch as much as possible with not only the possibility for premium rewards, as you can see there, we have the premium rewards, right? You got Uru and Odin's Blessing. You've got premium and non-premium comic cards down here. 
you've got uh, obelisks and uh, and uh, CTPs, but the the dispatch missions cost a lot of energy because you want to get the, the rewards and they don't give you much gold. It's like five or six thousand gold per run. So there's sort of negative synergy there, but there's positive synergy between running dispatch missions and doing the item acquisition chance from agent bonus. So you want to do that. However, you're going to need more energy. Now, we do get more energy with dispatch because of the, the system, right? Like when you when you acquire some of these early ones, they can give you energy. OK, I'm not getting any energy here, but sometimes if you don't get clear tickets, you get I'm not going to get any energy. Believe me, you can get energy from dispatch. It is one of the rewards. I just can't show you right now because the game is deciding to troll. There we go. Oh, I got a crit. I finally got a crit. <gasps> it's two o'clock in the morning. I finally got a crit. Yes. It does exist. Oh, fine. Guys, you don't. This is like a week's worth of awakening crystals for free. Ka chow. That's so good. Mm, that's amazing. Oh, this is the best video I've ever made. No, it's just, I just got lucky. Anywho, so yeah, you can get a crit reward on dispatch. So you should not wait for your dispatch to collect all the way up to max. You should try to collect it if it's at halfway during the day when you're like at work or at school or whatever. If you have a few minutes, I'm not telling you to like pull out your phone when you're at school or at work, get fired, get in trouble with your teacher, but you get what I'm saying. Yeah, so that's dope. I'm really, really, I'm actually going to screenshot this. Uh, okay, that's not, that's not the screenshot. I know how to work my phone. Hang on. Screenshot. Boom. I'm going to screenshot that. Cool. Anyways. Uh, yeah. So you can get energy from dispatch and you're going to want to put that back into dispatch. You're going to want to, you're going to want to run those missions. So here's how my farming has changed and it may not be the same for you, but here's how it is for me. And maybe this will resonate with you. I have stopped doing certain quests on the content status board. Normally I complete almost every single quest. The only quest that I wasn't doing even, you know, a couple of years ago, I wasn't doing the stupid X-Men quests because of the Mkron shards. But I was doing the Golden Girls, like I was doing these missions here uh, and I was doing the Fault missions here, okay? And I was doing the Twisted World missions here. Now, I don't have time to run these missions autoplay. I play this game all day and I still don't have time to run these missions autoplay. If you do, and especially if you're a low spending player, then it's then these are worth doing. They, they're, they're worth doing because of the chance to get rare bios for Colossus, Philavel, Ares, and, and Victorious. But for me and for other players, we don't have time. We just auto auto complete, right? Auto clear. However, I realized I don't have time to rank up and I, I haven't had time to rank up the two and three star obelisks into four star and five star and six star obelisks. It's just it's just a pain in the butt for me, right? Sort of like how I tell people to sell one star cards. That's what I've been doing for custom gears. I've been selling all of the one, two and three star custom gears because it's just not worth it for me anymore. Just like I sell the one, two, three, four. I actually sell one, two, three, four, five um, ISO because it's just not worth it anymore because we can get I can I can farm enough six star ISO from other game modes. So I've actually been I actually realized like a week ago. I'm, I'm just farming these missions to get a little bit of not these missions. Sorry, I'm farming these missions to get a little bit of gold. It's not even that much gold here. I'll, sh I'll show you how much gold it is. Even with boost points on it is 20,000 gold. I think a little bit more. Okay, 56,000 gold. It's not it's okay. It's actually a decent amount of gold when you have boost points. It's actually not a bad amount of gold, but I thought to myself, I'm just going to be selling these these uh, obelisks anyways. Right, it is it is about a hundred thousand gold, so I am leaving about three hundred thousand gold per day on the table. Maybe I shouldn't be doing that. Anyways, that's what I've been doing, and I've been taking the extra energy that I'm not spending on these missions, and then running more dispatch missions to get more dispatch level, and to also uh, have a higher chance of getting premium items. Again, it's it's a it's a risk reward type thing, right? There's a chance that I don't get any premium items, and I haven't gotten any. Uh, on the in the meantime, I've I've built up my dispatch up to level thirty four. But it's something to consider, I guess, if you're going to be selling those, those, uh, not ISO, not Uru. If you're going to be selling those obelisks anyways, it is something to consider. Also, maybe I should show you guys how much you really get without any boost points, because the boost points are definitely, that's a lot of gold. They're definitely inflating it. Let me just quickly, no, they still give you like 55,000 gold. I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. So maybe I'm wrong. You know what? I think I'm wrong. I, I think I just wasted my own time and I actually was, was throwing away about 300,000 gold per day, which is not a small amount 
300,000 gold per day is what, like 9 million gold a month? I mean, it doesn't seem like a lot when you say that a month, but still, it's, it's 10 million gold. So, yeah. Don't listen to me. Moral of the story, don't listen to the advice that I was trying to, that, that I was going to give you about skipping those missions. I actually think they're worth it now that I think about it. Even though you have to, even though I just go and sell them, I actually think it's worth it because I, I do just go and sell these. Right? And it's not like you make a lot. You make like 10,000 gold. It's not that that's not worth it. It's, selling them is not worth it. But the amount of gold that you're getting, I mean, maybe it's not worth it. Maybe you, maybe you should still make that decision yourself. But I think it's a lot more of a nuanced decision. So, yeah, decide for yourself how much energy you want to invest in that because that's just a gold return. But there's nothing else that you're getting. Whereas you could instead put that towards dement these dispatch missions. They're going to drop about one tenth the amount of gold because instead of being 50,000, it's 5,000, right? Two runs of 50,000. One run of, of dispatch is 5,000. So it's actually way, way less than a tenth. But, uh, or I don't know if maybe it's more than a tenth. Anyways, don't want to get into the math. Hit me up in the comments down below. I'm sh I'm obviously just brain shook after that crit reward uh, for Awakening Crystals. I can't believe that happened in a video. That's amazing. I'm so happy. Man, that really puts me in a good position to like free to play not have to buy up like five packs next month to get the multiple awakening characters that's so lit oh awesome okay anywho hit me up in the comments down below hopefully what i said in the second half of the video makes sense but make that nuanced decision whether you want to run all the content status board for all the various resources and gold or whether you want to put that uh, investment of energy into dispatch missions especially if you've maxed out your agent uh bonus for item acquisition okay hopefully that makes sense thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one take care